Hello and welcome to the capstone project for John Deere. Our project is called Standardized Metrics Reporting and Storage. My name is Jordan Meitinger. Today the branch of John Deere that we're working with is Electronic Solutions, which is located here on the north side of campus in Fargo, North Dakota. What John Deere wants is to fix a problem with department performance. They want it all in one central location. Most of their development teams are on different programs such as GitHub, Collaborator, and different progress tracking development softwares. They need to check the overall processes such as project reviews, project effects, and team members. They want it a central location. They want all the information uniform and formatted so that they can just use one solution for all of these different items. And they also want a uh, Python based that was be able to add on later on due to its versatility. Hello, my name is Jaden Rosenau and I will be talking about the back end of our project. For this project, we use Django, Python, and Django REST API framework. Django allows us to create a database and then create models with certain attributes we want our data to have. Our database consists of phase type, which is the area of where the error in the code occurred, such as requirements, design, code, integration, function testing, system integration, system valuation, and post-release. We also have projects, defects, reviews, and products. These four act in a way as products contain information for what projects are in work for this certain product, and defects and reviews are then connected to each project. After filling in what needs to be in our database, we then use Django Framework to create the serializers for each model. Serializers create the native Python data types, which then can be rendered into JSON or XML, and restricts what outputs or responses in the REST API give out. We are then allowed to make the views, which takes our request and returns the correct response we want to send to the web application. When the database and REST API was all set up, we then set up the apps, dashboard, and account, each with its own models and views. For account, we made models that allowed the admin to create more users and staff users, or team leaders in John Deere's term, and super users, other admins. Account creates all information for every user and the authentication token needed to view projects, defects, and reviews. It allows the creation of what logged in users can see and what non logged in users can see. Our API consists of the ability to post, delete, and get requests to attain data from team projects, review, defects, product, face type, and account list. My name is Anna Carlson and I covered the front end for this project. This included making the initial mockups for the user interface, coding in the CSS, and adding light and dark modes. John Deere also specifically asked for Plotly to be used to display graphs, and my teammate Wiley, who headed that part of the project, will explain in more detail once this section is complete. John Deere requested a dashboard view, so I set up a main page using the Flexbox format. Each overview graph that Wiley set up has its own section here, and the user can scroll down the page to see each of them. This was initially set up to grow and shrink horizontally based on the width of the window. But at John Deere's request, we change it to one item per line. There are options for light and dark mode so that the user may switch between a clean, professional look in white and an easy on the eye dark mode for those who stare at their screens longer. My name is Wiley Andrews, and for this project, I worked on getting graphs shown onto the webpage using Plotly. John Deere asked us to recreate a few graphs for them that will be displayed onto the dashboard and the project's detail pages that will represent the progress that each project is making and the company as a whole. These graphs include a line graph displaying reviews over time, a pie chart showing the percentage of defects that make it to post-release, and beyond, and bar graphs representing both defects per project phase and post-release defects by year. I also worked on displaying tables of open defects and reviews. I originally created these tables in Plotly, but due to the limitations of Plotly, I moved over to using a library called Django Tables 2. This transition made it much easier to display query sets of information to the user, without having to manually adjust column sizes, URL links, or data that overflow the cells that they are in. The graphs and tables pull information from the REST API by grabbing a query set from the model. This query set is then filtered. The filters applied include a filter based on inputted date range, three years by default, filtered based on project, and filtered based on whether the information is still open or not. The graphs and tables are sent from the Python code to the HTML through the use of Django's views. The HTML objects are first generated through the Plotly or Django Tables 2 libraries. Then, these objects get passed through context variables to be displayed in the HTML. 
We have HTML templates set up that will take these context variables and place them on the web page accordingly. The project now has four graphs and two tables that have gone through many changes over the course of the project. The Plotly graphs I've implemented has improved the user experience by providing the user the information he or she is looking for.